your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. Isaiah 58, 12, NIV. Welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and power of Jesus Christ. Welcome, my friends, again to another exciting episode of The Outreach Connection. I'm Dr. Peppers, and we're here to shake the salt and shine God's light all over this area. And we talk about the outreach and the community. We have a very specific part of our community that sometimes needs a little bit more help than others. And those of you that know my testimony know I've been there, done that, the drinking, the drugs, the running, the party, and the suicide attempts, but God. But God, someone was there always to tell me that there's a Savior that could save me from myself. That's what these gentlemen are doing, and you know one of my favorite groups to ever interview is Addicts Victoria. So once again, this time we have the international director, Mr. Brian Poiser. Now, which one of you would happen to be? See if you all can tell. Who would be the international director? Will Larill. Brian Poiser, please raise your hand. Be me. <laughs> and one who's been there, done that through the program, and the kids love, I am sure, Mr. Vern Branson. Yes. Did I say it right? Vernon Branson. Okay, Sorry. that's it. You don't like the Mr. Vern? No, I don't like that. <laughs> he said he's just a down home, hound home type of guy, just tells it like it is. And you happened to tell me before we went on that the book of James is your favorite. Here's one of the reasons it's not mine and it won't be yours either, Brian, because not many of you should presume to be teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's a retired math teacher or are you still teaching? Er, I was a teacher for 14 years okay. in math and had a different vision. God had a different plan for my life and yes. through a series of some things that I went through and did, um, got called to Attic be a the International Program Director for Addicts Victorious. And I love it. Just, it's an incredible life to live, to be able to get up every morning and to minister and to know that your oh. job is being in ministry. Yes. To be able to connect those two things is just an incredible thing. And you couldn't in the classroom. No, you can't in the classroom. You can't in a public school setting. Right. You just, because of the restrictions and the, the craziness of the society that we live in right now, yeah. you're just so limited on things. But even in those settings, you know, like what we're going to talk about today, mm -hmm. how the Lord is bigger than that, yeah. is stronger than that, That's and right. how he can allow individuals like Vern yes. to be able to do some incredible things mm -hmm. and to be able to minister in settings where we shouldn't even be, even shouldn't be able to be. Shouldn't be there. Right. Should not be there. Amen. And I know you'll probably hate this, but I retired from teaching, and my call has been to the missionary field, and guess where God's made me a missionary? To the public schools. So I now teach teachers in the master's program, and I speak at the openings of schools and teacher mm -hmm. seminars, and I always give my testimony. See, it's not a school session. Yeah. It doesn't count. So I can talk about mm -hmm. Jesus yes. to the teachers. They may not like it, but nobody's ever complained. So praise God, hallelujah, but it's what we keep doing, isn't it? Yes. So Mr. Oh, doesn't like Mr. Vern. I want to call you Mr. Vern, Mr. Jules Vern. <laughs> Do you know who that is? <laughs> no. Look it up when you get home. You'll like okay. the name Vern from now on. I like my name. I do too. I mm -hmm. think it's great. Except you had to go through the time period where that guy did, was it paper towels? Know what I mean? Ernest P. Know World. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But he was the goofy one. He was talking yeah. to the normal to guy. To the normal one. Yeah. If that's normal. So you're saying you're not the goofy one. You're the normal one. Well, we hope so. <laughs> now. Okay, we've got to start and hear both of your testimonies. You kind of skipped over yours a little bit about how you got from A to B, but let's go to mm -hmm. you first. Where were you born and raised? I was born in Norman, Oklahoma, and I was raised around in that area. Okay. I uh, lived there till I was about... 19 years old. What was your family like growing up? Uh, my dad says he wasn't an alcoholic, but mm. the uh, Coors truck delivered to our house. Oh. Uh, there was always something around the house. If I wanted to get in the refrigerator and drink, mm. there was always something to drink. Uh, abusive home. My mother 
tried to take us to church. Uh, she passed away when I was 16 years oh, old. Oh, that was very hard. And it was. But, you know, I realized that God allowed me to go through that for the, for the ministry that right. I'm in now. Or what you're doing now. Because a lot of these kids don't have no. one of their parents or maybe both, or both of them. both, yeah. Uh, so I had a lot of mental and physical abuse growing up. Uh, was in and out of trouble. Long story short, I, through uh, the court system, I decided to go in the military. Mm -hmm. uh, spent 14 years in the military. What branch? Army. Good. Uh, while I was in the military, you know, you can you can take a boy out of the country, but mm -hmm. you can't take a country out of boy. Yeah. You can take a person out of sin, but you can't take sin oh, out of yeah. a person unless Jesus is Come involved. On. Come on. And, you didn't know that, did you? And uh, I went from uh, using drugs to going in the military, uh, was still using drugs. Mm -hmm. They, I got hooked on liquid codeine while oh, I was in there. No. I drank like a fish. Uh, you know, then they taught me how to fight. So Mix those two. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want to come off that I'm a bad person. Uh, thank goodness for the Lord that yeah. I'm, I'm saved and delivered. And I, when I got out, of, I met my wife in the service. We got married. Was she wife. in the service? Or? Yes, she yeah. was. We were both in the service together. We met over in Germany. Good. Uh, she was a good Christian woman raised up and mm. why she unequally yoked herself with mm. me, I'm not sure. But The devil made her do it. <laughs> but, you know, God had a plan. Amen. And uh, when we both got out of the service, we'd move back to Oklahoma. Then things just ended up happening. We ended up moving up here. That's an awful long story, so I won't go so into that. So where did the turnaround point come? Where did the... It was in you... Oklahoma. Right okay. before I left Oklahoma, uh, I went to a revival. My sister invited me, and I didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, come on, go this revival with me. So the first... Uh, it was a week-long revival. Every mm -hmm. night she'd call me and see if I was coming, and I'd mm -hmm. make up an excuse. Finally, the last night, I, I loved my sister to pieces, mm -hmm. and I said, okay, I'm coming. I thought, well, I'll go late, show up, <laughs> sit in the back row, then leave early before the service is over Tell with. her I was there. Yeah, well, you know, it's, God don't work like that. <laughs> I walked in the back of the church, and it was like the Holy Spirit poked her in the side and said, hey, he's here. Mm. She turns around. And she runs back to get me. Of course, now everybody saw her running because she was sitting on the next to the front row. Mm -hmm. She led me up front. I sat down so there was no way out. The guy mm -hmm. was talking. I don't know his name. Don't even remember what he was giving a message about. God knows. <laughs> but Satan's sitting there saying, come on, let's get out of yeah. here. Let's get out of here. He walked around and he said, he started talking to people, ministering to people, and I said, God, if you're real, he's going to come up and he's going to tell me this, this, and mm. this. I open my eyes up and he's standing in front of me. And he says, the Holy Spirit called me over here to tell you this, this, and this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, Satan's trying more to get me out of wow. there. And I said, okay, God. That could have just been a fluke. Uh -huh. I, I watched him, and he never went back to the same person. And I said, God, if he's real, he'll come back and he'll tell me this, 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 and this, and this. And I didn't no more get that out of my mouth. And he's standing right there in front of me again. And he said, again. he said, hey, he says, I never go back to the same person again. He says, I don't know what's going on with you, but God told me to tell you this, this, uh -huh. this, this. Oh, yeah, and this. I couldn't get to the altar fast you enough. You couldn't not go. Your legs I, wouldn't have let you. I went to the altar. I give my life to the Lord. And it hasn't been perfect. You know, I, I've had some problems, you know, here and there. Yeah. Uh, like Paul says, and I'm definitely not Paul, but mm -hmm. I have to die daily. That's right. You know, and uh, I... I fought with anger for a long time. I still fought with drinking, mm -hmm. and uh, I had to. I'd went. I'd been involved with Addicts Victorious for about 
16 years. 16 years on. you had. You were one of those that would come in, go out, I, and come yeah, in. Come in revolving go out. But, doors. But I wasn't, I wanted to give up drinking altogether. So I finally did. And I, I just turned my life over completely to God. And again, it hasn't been perfect. No. But I sure see a big change. And you're his. A big change. He's not going to let you. You can sin again, but you won't love to sin again. But I don't want to sin again. And you don't want to sin again. That's the difference with Addicts Victorious. Yes. And Brian, while we finish, we're going to finish out with this in a minute because i got a couple of questions here. But tell us, for those who have never heard of Addicts Victorious, what does that mean? Is that a 12-step program? No, it's, Addicts Victorious is an international program that focuses really on, we call them their 10 steps. And everybody always asks the question, well, what is the difference between an anti-victorious and maybe uh -huh. a typical 12-step program? And there's, when I talk about it, I think the biggest thing is I always, in one of our programs, have a picture. It's a picture of a road sign. And the road sign has two words on it, future and past. Mm. And so many programs focus on a person's past. Mm -hmm. They focus on, we look through and we dig through everything, mm -hmm. we look through everything, and we try to... You know, as men, we get in to talk about and identify and look at our past and be able yeah. to. And one of the things we always look at in AV is that it's kind of like this. You imagine your trash and you get your trash on a Monday morning. You get set it out on the curb. Do you go back out after you've set it on the curb mm. and go out and dig through your trash to see what's there? Mm. You already know what's there. The key is focusing on our future, That's our future good. in Christ and knowing who Jesus Christ is, mm -hmm. knowing how he can heal, he can deliver us from whatever it is that we have, mm -hmm. and to be able to take us right now in the present where we're at mm -hmm. and to be able to build upon that and each day growing to know him better. That's good. That is very good. I love that trash analogy because really a lot of the people we deal with think they are trash. They right. think they should be in the middle of that garbage can taken out and burned. And we would have been had it not been Amen. for Christ. So let's get back to your turnaround moment here now. For me, there was really, I guess, two things. One is I grew up in a really normal household. I, both parents loved me very much and Good. grew up in church, knew the word. Yeah. But I wasn't, you know, I, there's a guy, and I remember him often. He, he always uses it. I, I, was in, I knew the word, but I didn't do the word. Oh, that's good. And that was me. I, I always... When I talk about this in our meetings, I always talk about being a pew warmer. Uh -huh. I would sit in church on Sunday morning, and you know that was the extent of it. I would do that one thing, and that pretty well would cover everything I would do for the week. Mm. And as a kid, I you know we knew the word. We went to church every Sunday, did you know the things I was supposed to do. But it wasn't really until I went to college. And I went to college in Kirksville, Missouri. I'm mm -hmm. originally from Palmyra, Missouri, so I'm well, from good. this area. Okay, yeah. And uh, when I went to college, I met two gentlemen that came to my room, my dorm room, and, and uh, they were involved in the organization called Campus Crusade for Christ. Mm. And they shared with me, at the time, what we called the Four Spiritual Laws. I don't remember the little yellow yeah, book that they I used to those. use. Did you know at that, that time who, who Campus Crusade was? No, I did not. Okay. did not know a thing about okay. them, but at the time I was, and they shared with me those, those four laws. And at that point, I had always been in church, but I had never committed to church. I had never turned myself over to Christ and said, you know, these feelings, I was, I still am. I'm not naturally the person I'm always kind of like to be the behind the scenes person yeah. to do the little things to help people that are just completely and totally gifted to ministry to be mm -hmm. able to give and preach and minister. Mm -hmm. And I've always been that kind of behind the scenes person. And with when I turned myself over to Christ, I became part of the, the leadership of that, mm -hmm. of, on that campus. And Went to different places, went to the inner city of Chicago, went to inner city of Denver mm. and different places and, and worked in ministry on various projects and Did also on campus. Did you feel comfortable then? It's funny. It's, I, was, I really relate to Moses. Mm. I really do. Not as far as comparing myself to Moses, but the but stuttering the stutter and the And that it's always been... For whenever I do anything like this, it's always a very unnatural thing, mm -hmm. but actually that's a good thing. It is a good thing. It's an incredible so thing. So right now you're out of your you're comfort zone. You're very dependent upon the Holy Spirit to cool. guide and direct you. That's it. Because I can't do it myself. That's he what tells you think. that without me, right. you can do nothing. Amen. Not a zip, zero, no, nothing. Amen. That's it. And I like that because once we know that, okay, I can't do anything, so yeah. have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. 
and I do that in those support group meetings. Sometimes Jerry, or the Jerry founder, Jenkins, Jerry love Jenkins Jerry, yeah. has me lead the support group meetings. You know, it's weird. It's a different setting. You know, I was a school teacher, yeah. and it's that's a weird. It's a different setting. You're in there with a group of kids, and you're it's kind of like this. When you're in that setting, you're in a group setting where you're the authority figure. Yeah. Where the kids are, you know, as we know, with the work that we do with teens, right. that they're ignoring you half the time. Yeah. But it's a different feel <laughs> as when you get in a group with a group of adults, and you're supposed to work with them, mm -hmm. blend with them, and to be able to minister them to them. And I have that same feeling every time you go in, but it's incredible what the Lord can do. Mm. And there's sometimes in those meetings where you just kind of sit back and watch. You really do it. You're just you're not really leading them. You're just kind of a spectator. Yes. And it's the same thing with a lot of things in ministry. That's right. Where we just sit get sit back and watch. Isn't it awesome? What the Lord is doing. <laughs> and then you know it's like, wow, where did that come from? Or as you can probably share, things come out of your mouth and it's like, I don't even know where I know. I love that. I love that. And I also love the fact that God took someone who was reluctant, mm -hmm. not some big show off that their mouth always got them in trouble like yeah. I would have been, but he knew he could trust you. He knew that he could take you and be the one who would disseminate, who would be the one that spread and did the, the Holy Spirit flowing. So international is a little bit beyond right now here in Palmyra area. Yeah, we have, right now we have support groups in several different states. If you can go all the way out the state of Washington, to all the way to Delaware, to all the way to Texas. Mm. We have a couple of programs overseas, and, um, and specifically right now we have one in Kenya where I actually, mm. with between broken English and stuff, it's amazing how that's what happened, where wow. we just had a person that emailed us that was a person that was in Kenya, oh. and we've mailed in information about the program, and it's, it's, when I first came on with AV, I was really gung-ho and tried to really go out and get support groups started. Mm -hmm. And through the process of the last year and a half where I've been involved with it, we've stopped that. Mm -hmm. We've stopped trying to do it ourselves, right. for myself in particular, and just to sit and, and watch. And yeah. we get through contacts with people, through other pastors, where people who have been through the mm -hmm. five-day. Mm -hmm. which is our, our counseling program that right. we have people come in and get help, which we have some people in right now that yes. are just doing incredible. Good. Where they are the ones that go out and share, hey, through their church, yeah. this is something you guys need to have. This is something completely and totally different. You know, we have people that go through our program that have been in treatment more times than Many they have times. fingers. Right. And, and they could recite the 12 step. Right. They know the 12 backwards. steps. They know that stuff. But... Until we reach that point, this is why I always, I, it's one, my neat part of my job is I don't do a lot of the teaching in there, but every day I get to watch the people go in and out. Love it. And to, <laughs> I always say I would love to have a camera and take a picture yes. of them Monday morning. Yes. And then to take a picture of them Friday when they leave. That's good. And one it is week. Two different people. It Isn't really is. Burn can attest that it's on just on right. Tuesday nights when yeah. he comes. It really is. I love that too because you do. You see not only physically, but you know, there's a change in the eyes, in the mm -hmm. expression, right. in the right. heart, in the posture, in the everything. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so Burn, you went from just drinking and not knowing what you were going to do. When was your first um, bout with Addicts Victorious or introduction to? How did you know about it? Well, a friend of mine's wife passed away and he was having some struggles. And so a guy suggested we go to AV. Was that still back in Oklahoma? No, that was here. That was here. Okay. That was here. And uh, I've lived here for about 19 years okay. now. Okay, I got you. And uh, so to support him, a bunch of us went. Mm -hmm. And when I got in there, I was like, hey, I really like this. Mm. So I started getting involved with it a little more and Great. more, you know, speaking in the meetings mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and uh, I kind of, believe it or not, like Brian, I'm I'm not a talker. I I can talk one on one, but you mm -hmm. get me in a group setting with more than ten people, and I clam up. But God doesn't. But God, doesn't. <laughs> you're right. You're right. So again, he said, "Okay, here's one who will shut up about everything else and talk about me." That's right. good. So how did you start? Well, uh, I'd been going back and forth with AV not going on a regular basis and Jerry came to our church because it was actually birthed in the church where I go to. Oh, okay. And uh, when he came in, he, he gave uh, had a sermon that day and I felt the night before 
I knew he was coming. I thought, really? man, I ought to get involved with AV a little more. Really? So I went to Jerry and I said something to him about I'd like to start a meeting on Saturday nights because Saturday night was a big drinking night mm -hmm. for me when I drank. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'd like to start one. So he said, okay, great. So, he, so I started a Saturday night and that was going good and a friend of mine called me and he says, can I bring some of the kids from the youth home oh, to your Saturday yeah. night oh, meeting? Bing. And I said, sure. Well, it didn't work out and didn't work out. And then long story short, uh, an opening came up out at the uh, juvenile home for Addicts Victorious to go out and have a Teens Victorious mm -hmm. out there. And my friend called me and he says, hey, he says, if you guys can come in, we can let you come and have a meeting right here with all the kids. Wow. So I, wow. I went to Jerry and I said, Jerry, I said, we've got a chance to get somebody in out at the youth home. And he says, great. He mm. says, I already know who it's going to be. <laughs> I said, really? I said, who's it going to be? And he says, you. you. And I said, no, no, you're, you're mistaken. It's not going to be me. And he said, yeah, yeah, it's going to be you. So I went to Dr. Gary, which I, I think the world of I him. Do too. I and, do too. And uh, he's, a, he's a mentor to me. He's and, wonderful. And I told him the same thing. And he says, I already know who it's going to be. Oh. And I, I just kind of rolled my eyes. I said, who's that? And he said, you. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't feel that. And he said, just pray about it. <laughs> yeah. So I did. And I said, well, I'll, I'll, I thought. I'll start it and then somebody else can take over. Mm -hmm. And what have we been doing it out there? About five years five now? Five years yeah, now. It's been quite five a while. Five years. And, uh, I love it. You're the sneak in the back door type of a guy that gets sucked in by the Holy Spirit. I love it. I love it though. <laughs> I do you know, too. You know what? I hated people because Isn't I didn't that love myself. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's and, good. And if you'd have told me, 19 years ago yeah. that I was going to be loving these kids yeah. and loving these people, I'd have looked at you and laughed mm -hmm. right in your face. I'd have been like, there's no way. But I love those kids. Love those them. kids yeah. are part of my life. I thank God for allowing those kids yes. to be a part of my life. Yes. I'm going to try not to cry. Well, listen, I met you <laughs> the first time I saw you was with tears because the lady that was on with me last week also had worked out there at the at the detention, right. and you knew her by name, I guess. Right. And boy, I tell you, when <laughs> Esther was the one who had the brain hemorrhage, and when she walked out of here and you were standing there, you said, I love that woman. I love that woman. I didn't know the connection, except I thought you had just been watching her on TV. No, no. <laughs> so anybody that has a heart for kids, you love the kids, so you love them. Yeah. And Jesus has the biggest heart for kids. He says, he suffer does. them. Let them come unto me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you harm one of them, oh. better than what? A millstone wrapped around your neck and thrown into the depths of the ocean. That's about as tough as he got. That gets pretty rough. That's pretty it? rough. That That's means rough. death. They're going to drown. Uh, you know, these kids have been lied to. They've been told that yeah. they'll never amount to anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I can tell you, my dad, I love him to pieces, and I forgive him. Is he still alive? And in? he's still mm -hmm. alive. He's serving God. Good. And, uh, but when I was a kid growing up, he said that I'd never amount to anything. He said if I took two pennies and rubbed them together over a piece of paper, you won't be worth the copper that falls off of them. I bet and he heard that from his dad. Maybe. Usually well, what would, begets, yeah. begets, begets. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's a lie. It's a big the lie. The Bible says, now, it depends on what translation, it says the sins or the iniquities of the parents will visit the children. That's right. Yeah. Okay, visit. Those children don't have to they invite that stuff good. into their home. That is right. They don't have to invite it into no. their heart. God's word and says the opposite. That's right. And and so the thing is, is a lot of times people, you know, the Bible says there's life and death in the power of the mm -hmm. tongue. And we can put curses on people. That's right. And when you tell somebody that they... Uh, are never going to amount to anything. Mm -hmm. That sticks in their head. It does. And, and the enemy will use it over and yeah. over and twist it. And right. And, you know, I've had kids tell me, they say, well, I'm going to jail 
I'm going to be in prison because my dad's in prison and mm -hmm. the system told me I was going to prison. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be just like my dad. I said, you don't have to no, be you like your dad. Have to be. You don't have to accept That's that good. life. That is so good, Vern. You know, it saddens me. The kids range from 10 years old 10. to 18. Oh, my heavens, a 10-year-old. What has a 10-year-old been I would say 90% of them have already been sexually oh. active. And I, I would tell the parents that are out there listening, know what your kids are doing. Yes. Know where your kids are at. Good. Because there's so much out there yes. that can harm your kids. And the sad thing is, is some of these kids... Their parents taught them how to use meth. I know. Taught them how to sell meth. Or had the alcohol available like your dad did without right. knowing. Yeah. Right. Did yours, Brian, did you grow up in a, no, you were in a house, you were no, in a we, Christian. We had, it was around, but it wasn't something that was extremely prevalent. Yeah. But I, I one of the things I always think about and with, with being in education, you can yeah. probably relate to this too, was as a teacher, I didn't really see this. We saw the shell. Exactly. And I think so often with so many people out there, and I was there, I was there is we don't see yeah. the child of God that's, that's there. Good. That's good. In good. spite of the shell. That and we in the see. public schools, we're programmed not to right. see the godly side of the kids because keep your mouth shut. Yeah. I got in trouble a few times. We had a before school Bible group for a long time, and then mm -hmm. the kids could lead it, but I couldn't. I could open the door and let them meet in there, but we had the guitars and the donuts and the ministering, and the one thing now is that God trained you up in the way to deliver, in the way to teach, in the way to right. present, and you can now be the international director, and you can be the one that's sitting there just telling the kids. We had a Cadillac Jack Bible group going on down in St. Louis. It's a biker bar where the uh, the owner got saved and went, went to prison and got saved mm -hmm. and gave it over on Tuesday night so that we could all go in and minister. Bring your cigarettes, bring your drinks on over. We're over in the area where the lounge people used to sing and now they're singing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. We only have a minute left. What did we miss? We've been giving out the numbers. We've been telling on the um, Thursdays. What is that on Thursdays? Thursdays is we have our men's meeting from 4 to 5 along with our women's meetings. Mm -hmm. And we also have our what's called after your Bible study with Dr. Gary Schluckerberg. Yes, you know, he's a wonderful. wonderful. It's a wonderful crash course in Christianity, and for I love it that. doesn't have to be somebody that's been to the AB program. We have people from all different kinds of churches that go to that. Then we have our meetings that we have on Tuesday nights. The one that's the uh, regular adults meeting. We also have everyone's the welcome. Meet. Everyone's welcome. Teens meeting exactly the same time. So we've had in the past where parents will go to the adult meeting and the teens will slip in and go to the teens ah. meeting, and just to get the help <laughs> that they need all. and just. To, you know, sometimes it's good just to be able to have somebody to That's talk to. Right. It really is. Will you all come back? We could do another two hours with you guys. It is just awesome the way the Holy Spirit's flowing, and people need this desperately. Folks, help out with Addicts Victorious. They can always use donations. They can use uh, prayer. Cover them with prayer. All of the directors, all of those leading. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. To Thank God you. be the glory. I'm Dr. Thank Pepper, shaking the salt. been watching Outreach Connection. If you would like to contact this ministry, you may write Outreach Connection, care of CTN, WTJR, 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois, 623. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Today's encouraging word has been brought to you by your friends at the Christian Television Network.